Wow, that's a beautiful picture frame. Hmm, what's the word for frame in Portuguese? What's up everyone, I am Molly, your real life English fluency coach and as a Portuguese learner, I feel very privileged to have lived in Brazil and be surrounded by Portuguese every day. However, just like you who is learning English, I also feel the need to learn new words all the time. So just like me, you might be a little frustrated that you are always repeating the same words or worse, not finding the right words you need in certain situations. That's exactly why in today's lesson, I have for you some tips you can use to learn new words in English and improve your communication. Because here at Real Life English, we are here to help you be fluent in the real world while speaking confidently with anyone and understanding fast English. Just like Keenan, who says that our channel is the fuel he needs to continually improve his English. So if you don't want to miss out on any of our weekly lessons that will help you learn English in a fun and interactive way, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell down below. Let's get on to the lesson. How do I learn new words? It's a question that I get asked quite often. There are also so many ways to do it. So that's why in today's lesson, there are tips for elementary beginners, intermediate and advanced learners. Even though the tips are interchangeable and you can benefit from them regardless of your English level, I want you to know that you can move on to the next part of the video, but I highly recommend you watch through as these tips may surprise you. The timestamps for the levels are in the description below. So let's start with elementary. If you are relatively new to learning English and still are in the early stages of your language learning journey, you'll need to put in the effort to learn new vocabulary deliberately. This means that you actually need to look up and practice new words until they become second nature. As an elementary learner, you don't know most of the words in the second language yet, so you need to actually learn them don't worry, this is an ongoing process and you don't need to go crazy trying to memorize lists and lists of words. So tip one, brainstorm the topics you normally talk about in your first language and the words you are most likely to use when talking about them. Following on from that, tip two, add those words to Quizlet. Quizlet has a lot of gamified activities that will help you remember those words. You can start creating the flashcards with your first language versus English, and then evolve to English versus English definition. Another way you can use Quizlet is to look for groups of words that were already created by other users. My tip is that you look for specific groups of words you want to learn, like emotions, house objects, common business expressions, for instance. Just search for what you want in English. To make the most out of this experience, try to find words that are within some context, like in a sentence or illustrated with a picture. Now, tip number three, and another way to make Good use of your brainstorm lists is to use other spaced repetition software like Anki to record the new words that you learn. Not only will it help you keep an easy to access record of the new words you are learning, it also helps you revisit the ones you have had a hard time remembering. It prioritizes them for you, so you actually study the things you don't know very well yet. Tip number four, keep a weekly word journal. On day one, write a new word and then write a sentence using that word each day. This helps you remember the word and to see it in context through your own creativity. On the second day, write a new word. In this sentence, on day two, you should use the word from day two, but also the word from day one. By doing this, you are using the words again and again and you are practicing your writing too. For example, on day one, your word could be suitcase. The sentence could be, I pack my suitcase before I go on holiday. On day two, maybe a new word you learned was advertisement. So your sentence could be, I bought this suitcase 
because I saw it in a TV advertisement. Easy, do this for seven days and then repeat your weekly word journal each week. Tip number five is to find the most common false cognates in your native language. Now, false cognates are words similar in form or sound in another language, but have a completely different meaning. One funny example in Portuguese and English is the Portuguese verb pretender, which when correctly translated is the English verb to intend, which is a more formal way of saying to plan. Anyway, a few Brazilians have said to me, Oli, do you pretend to stay in Brazil for a while? They have just assumed that pretender and the English verb pretend mean the same thing. Well, the funny thing here is that pretend in English means to fake something. So you have to be careful about these false friends. The good thing about learning false cognates or false friends early in your studies is that you can prevent mistakes from fossilization, which means that they will be hard to correct in the future. Now, tip six is to play Scribble. This website is a fun and laid back way to learn new words through visuals. You will draw or see other people drawing and you will have to think of the word on the spot whilst the other person is drawing. If you feel like you need some extra push to learn real life vocabulary, well, we thought about learners just like you and created the Real Life Native Immersion course. In this course, we will teach you lots of words and pronunciation through engaging conversations. Besides that, you will get to put that into practice with the Fluency Circle community. Try it out now today for free with our three part power learning series. I will link it up here and also in the description below. Now let's move on to intermediate learners. If you are an intermediate learner, you already know enough to communicate with others and get by with the language. Because of that, it's easy that you will fall into the plateau. The plateau is the stage of your learning that you feel like you are not making any progress. The key for you here is to learn how to vary and expand your vocabulary. And I find learning through chunks and functions the best way to do this. Tip seven, start noticing language patterns. Whenever you encounter a new word, also notice the words that come after or before it. By doing that, it'll be easier to use it in a natural and correct way. Tip eight, keep a record of new words. You can even test your art skills by drawing mind maps. Write down synonyms or verb noun collocations to see the most common combinations or prepositions that accompany the words you are learning. If you are aware of them, their retrieval is much faster because you won't need to rely on the patterns of your first language to remember which word to use next. Tip nine. Lyrics training is also a super fun way of learning chunks and functions. You can use the lyrics training website and choose songs according to your level. Tip 10, use Kindle to read short, easy stories in English. I learn most of my new words through reading. For me, this is the best way to consolidate your vocabulary because you are seeing these word chunks I just spoke about in context. The grammar structures are correct. Stories are rich in varying vocabulary and reading stories is a fun way to learn new words. I also find reading quite relaxing and a break from my hectic life schedule. Besides having the input of words in a natural context, you can also use the definition feature to learn new words. Actually, Ethan recently interviewed Ollie on the Beyond Borders talk show. I am a fan of Ollie's books and I actually read them. You can hear what he has to say about learning English through stories in the Beyond Borders interview. You can click up here and I'll also link it down in the description below. Advanced learners. If you are an advanced learner, you already have a good range of vocabulary under your belt. Tip 11, as you can already easily infer meaning from context without much difficulty, it's better for you to focus on learning the subtleties and nuances of words. For example, dog. It's a pretty simple word, right? You know it as an animal. But do you know what I mean if I said to you, hey, what's up dog? In this case, dog refers to being a close friend of mine. 
What about if I invited you to lunch and you said no? And then I said, don't dog me. That would mean that I don't want you to make me go to lunch all by myself. I want you to join me. Essentially, I don't want you to abandon me. Isn't it crazy how some words have positive and negative meanings? That's why it's important to learn the nuances and differences of the same word. Tip number 12. To help you with that, you can play words with friends or word puzzles. In these games, you'll need to find words that are accurate and specific for the descriptions displayed. Tip number 13, and as an advanced learner, you are probably at the stage where you are dealing with more specific themes and topics that are related to your job, your studies, or even just your specific interests. For example, you might be a medical student, or you might be interested in animal or marine life like David Attenborough. So those words that you need to learn and remember are quite obscure or different from regular learners. So, how do you learn these uncommon words? Well, I am personally a visual learner, so I find it really useful to learn new words through pictures. I actually have a visual dictionary in Portuguese. In a visual dictionary, you will encounter words that you probably didn't know existed. And the best part is you don't need to look it up because, well, you can see the picture is right there for you. Amazing, right? I absolutely love this. Then a nice way to follow up is to find an online thesaurus. Find their synonyms and how to use them in different contexts as well. Now, you may be asking yourself, okay, Ollie, but how do I make sure I don't forget the new words I learn? Well, this is a very good question. And the answer is you have to activate that passive vocabulary. Passive vocabulary are the words that you know and easily remember or understand when someone mentions them, but that you don't use when you communicate with others. So start implementing them. Remember my list from the beginning of this video? You can create your own and every day choose one of them to practice. Find some samples of sentences of these words on the internet, give preference to news and other real life materials. Then practice repeating these a couple of different times throughout the day. So in this lesson, we've seen strategies, tools, ideas, websites, and much more to help you learn and remember new words. Make sure you let me know in the comments below which of them you already use and which ones you'll give a try, or even which ones are new to you. Now, let's recap the vocabulary that you've learned today. Oh yeah. So this lesson is divided into two parts. First, I'll show you some exercises to train your muscles, your articulation and the sounds of English so that you sound and feel more natural when you speak. Then I'll show you how you can mock real and natural conversations in a fun way so that you can step up your speaking skills.